Hi, and welcome to Accent Excellence. I'm Chuck Leyenberger, and coming up on this month's show, we're having a conversation with Roanoke County Public Schools Superintendent Dr. Greg Killow. So don't go anywhere. A special edition of Accent Excellence starts now. Hi, and welcome back to Accent Excellence. Ladies and gentlemen, it's my pleasure to welcome back Dr. Greg Killow, Superintendent of Roanoke County Public Schools, to the show. And Dr. Killow, we're getting ready to start the 2017-18 school year later this month, but we thought we'd take a moment and sit down and kind of reflect on all of the many, many accomplishments uh, that we've had over the last year and really kind of celebrate some of the excellence uh, of our schools. And so we thought we would start uh, with academics and, and you know maybe kind of begin at the end with graduation and you know really that alone huge accomplishment yeah it, w it was I think you you used a great word celebration there, we have to celebrate all the great accomplishments not only of our students but our staff there there was so much great work done this past school year and I believe it's a a beginning of a new direction that we're heading in in Roanoke County um, graduation, what can I say? Uh, wow. You know, you, you, you just look at all the students that come across the stage, you see the work potential in them, you see where they're going to go, you see all their accomplishments. You know, to, to know what we had and the amount of scholarships, to know that we had two students get into um, Naval Academy, Air Force Academy, what an accomplishment. That's unheard of in many mm -hmm. places. And all the things that are, were done this year. Um, and I just want to congratulate all the graduates and wish them the best of luck in their future. I think that Roanoke County Schools has prepared them well. You know, and speaking of graduates and, and part of that, something that, that is, I think, one thing that many folks at home don't even really recognize is that our graduates went home not just with a diploma in their hand, but they all went home with a certification in their hand as well. Right, and we're really working hard, our CTE group and uh, under the direction of uh, Jason Sir and Mark Jones have worked very hard this year. We had over 1,500 certifications given out. Those certifications are powerful because when I go out to a job, it says not only do I have a high school diploma, but I have the skill set to go ahead and be able to start doing certain kinds of work. And this is going to lead into something big that we're working towards this year. This year we had our first DMT group and our cybersecurity. Wow. The face of CTE is changing fast. It's becoming a reality. The jobs mm -hmm. that people can get with these certifications in a high school diploma, many of them will be starting in the range of thirty to seventy thousand dollars. And we're beginning the first stages of the apprenticeship program this year because of the great work of all of our people. And the kudos out to our CTE department for all their work. And you know that you talk about that expansion of CTE with not only EMT, where coming up this year we're going to be going into year two of EMT, yeah. but also offering a level two of EMT for those students who are looking for even a further, uh, to further their, their skills in that field. And we're looking to further even expand the offerings, but what you're talking about with that EMT and furthering their skills, those skills can be used as an EMS. Those skills can be used to go on into further education, nursing, PA, doctor, all kinds of fields. Um, we are working very closely with the higher ed center and um, with these groups to try to improve the flow of students through um, their educational process mm -hmm. and helping them to be able to have a job while they're going to school so they can help pay for some of this. A lot of celebration of success. You know, another that we're very proud to talk about. Once again, all of our schools are fully accredited. <laughs> And this is an, an especially special year because we didn't, we, we kind of did it straight up, didn't right. we? Right. We didn't really need any expedited retakes. Um, our teachers did such a fabulous job, our administrators, everybody um, being involved. It takes a team that all of our schools did not need any other help, any other mm -hmm. requirements or ways to get through the system. We met it straight up. We only needed eight students in the, uh, one elementary school and eight students in one middle school in order to fully meet full accreditation in all 27 of our schools. That is unbelievable. That again is a, our test scores on the average were up stronger and more solid than ever before. 
and that means our teachers are really we saw even mm -hmm. changes in teaching approaches a lot more small group a lot more project-based learning a lot more engaged learning more authentic learning it's really good stuff that's beginning to happen and I just applaud our teachers for doing that. And in, in some of the programs that you're talking about, especially looking at the literacy plan, and we've talked about the literacy plan before, it's starting to, to take hold. <laughs> you know, we're, we're approaching in those young grades, and we're starting to see the benefits of the plan. And when you see kindergartners reading and writing, and, and they're reading above grade level, the majority of them, we're seeing 80 and 90 percent of them in kindergarten, first grade, and second grade, all the small group work, all the work that our early teachers are doing, it, that is the foundation years to a great education and this reading plan is working. We need the help of our parents and our communities to continue to support that because it does take all of us seeing the importance of that because mm -hmm. that will make a long-term impact in the lives of these children. That levels the playing field and gives all children an opportunity. And talking about leveling the play field, playing field, one more area expanding the laptop program down to sixth grade so that now every single middle and high school student will have a laptop for their use. Right. And one of the great things, again, with community involvement, teacher involvement, administrator involvement, we're not going to just hand laptops out to right. sixth graders the first day. There's a plan in place to help them know how to handle it, how to work with it. They're going to be introduced to it. And I was, I'm very appreciative of our technology department and the leadership of Jeff Terry and his ITRTs and his technicians in working on a plan to make technology purposeful and useful and not just handing it out. It's mm -hmm. a tool, but it is a wonderful tool all of our students are going to have to use one day. I'm excited about the fact that we will have one-to-one uh, -one all the way from 6th through 12th grade, what an accomplishment, and, and again, powerful. Absolutely. We're going to continue our conversation with Dr. Kilo after a few minutes, and we're going to be talking more about some of the accomplishments in academics, so don't go anywhere. Hi, and welcome back to Accent Excellence. We're continuing our conversation with Dr. Greg Killow and celebrating the excellence at Roanoke County Public Schools. And Dr. Killow, recently, we were, you know, just the last segment, we were talking about academics. But now let's talk about some of the accomplishments that happened in our classroom, both uh, student and staff accomplishments. And I tell you what, we started off the 2016-17 school year with a big one, a huge one, a blue ribbon school. Right, that was huge. It's a major accomplishment, Green Valley under the leadership of Ashley McCallum and her whole staff have performed above and beyond all like schools in the state of Virginia. Um, going up with them and a, and a teacher to go and receive the Blue Ribbon Award was just such a honor and it is an honor not just to Green Valley and their teachers, it's a special to them, but it's to the whole school division because we have a, I believe we have a lot mm -hmm. of Blue Ribbon schools. Yeah, and it's also a mark to the parents and to the community there that, who believe yeah. so strongly and supported that school. Yes, and, and, it, and it's an accomplishment because it shows everybody what can be done when everybody works together. Another huge accomplishment, uh, and this is kind of a repeat one, Glenver High School, Cave Spring High School, both listed on U.S. News and World Report's best high school list, and we've been seeing that for these high schools for several years now. And it is a major accomplishment. I would, I would agree with that report and say that these are two outstanding schools, but I believe we have five outstanding schools. I, as an educator, as a father, as a, a parent, as a person that really studies education, there's not one school in Roanoke County that I would not want my child to attend. All five of our high schools, in my mind, are top in their class. Mm -hmm. and, but I think special kudos should go to both Cave Spring and Glenver High School for their accomplishments. But I believe we have five outstanding high schools. And another outstanding high school, uh, Hidden Valley High School, big national attention uh, in Education Week for a program that, that we are piloting, not just at Hidden Valley, but other places with student-led assessments. and, and it, received some national recognition. Yeah, it was really neat to, under the leadership of Rhonda Stegall and Lori Wimbush, we were able to bring in Education Weekly and they were just so impressed with the student authentic learning projects that were going on 
um, seeing real live problem solving skills in action happening in a school um, that it made national attention mm -hmm. and it got national recognition. Um, and this is something that we're, again, not just implementing in one of our high schools, but looking at placing it in all five of our schools. Just right now, Hidden Valley took the lead in that. And in a similar vein, uh, Hidden Valley has been continuing the Titan 21 events. Yes. Um, that is something that we're, I think we're starting to see now replicated at, at other schools. Yes. And it, again, it's, a, it's allowing students to use the four C's, critical thinking, collaboration, creativity, and communication. I've attended those events, and they're just special events because you're able to ask the students questions about the work that they're doing and to understand their deep knowledge and their deep interest and their deep passion about something. And it's a better format of learning because it's what they will use one day, whether they go into the workforce or the military or they go into college, because that's real where real authentic learning occurs. Another, and again, we keep talking about accomplishments here, but yet another huge accomplishment over at Northside Middle School. They have been redesignated a school to watch, and they joined three of our other middle schools uh, as schools to watch here in Roanoke County. And it was really neat to have the panel come in and talk about how impressive the learning and the teaching and how well the team worked together at Northside. To have schools that with the different demographic makeups to continually perform higher and better than most of their like schools in the state of Virginia is powerful. For them to be a witness for others to come in and model behind is tremendous. Another great example of, of some of the accomplishments um, earlier in the year, again kind of visiting back to CTE, we held some tech tours. Uh, in partnership with our friends over at the Economic Development Office in Roanoke County, and specifically uh, a tour over at AEP. You talk about opening some students' eyes. That yeah. was an amazing opportunity for our kids. Yes, and we want more of those because, you know, a lot of times when we, we need to start talking about career education, parents need to be teachers, guidance counselors, talking about real career exploration and decision making and knowing all the career pathways. We think of AEP only as a group that provides electricity, but you have so many different departments, so many support groups that are in there. You have people with all kinds of certifications and degrees that are great paying jobs and, are, and it's a major part of our community. I mean, we want to open up more of these opportunities so students can see, oh, the vast array. When we talk about the number of jobs and how to fill it, we need to show students all the opportunities that exist out here. And finally, a couple of teachers received some national recognition. First was Lindsay Murray with a Milken Award, and also Tina Coffey as the U.S. Teacher of the Year for Level Up Village. Two national uh, recognitions for our teachers. And Lindsay, I remember the first time I saw her, and uh, I walked through W.E. Cundiff, and I saw her in the classroom. She's sitting on the floor. She has some groups three groups of students. She has a small group with her. She's on the floor. They're pr critically thinking, and she's, they're working together. They're, the students are challenging her, and she's challenging the students. And to watch the other groups working and waiting for their opportunity to be with Mrs. Murray, that is real learning. And we have lots of teachers like Lindsay, and Lindsay was very humble and would tell you she is glad to have received the award, but she sees that as a re award for all of our own county teachers because we have many people doing that. Absolutely, and uh, again, these, we're just highlighting you know, the, 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 the cream of the crop here of all of our accomplishments. Um, we could do an entire year's worth of, of episodes talking just about accomplishments uh, in the classroom, but we've still got a lot more to talk about including how Roanoke County Public Schools is supporting our community. So don't go anywhere. We'll be right back with more Acts and Excellence. I want to be popular. I want to be invited to parties. I don't want to be invisible anymore. I want to be part of the in crowd. You think you have to drink to be in the in crowd, but giving in to peer pressure isn't going to get you anywhere. Be true to yourself to accomplish your big dreams. Hi, and welcome back to Accent Excellence. We're having a conversation with Dr. Greg Killo, Superintendent of Roanoke County Public Schools. And Dr. Killo, we've been talking a lot about academics, but our schools are so involved, not just in the classroom, but in our community in a number of different ways. Yes, and I would agree, and it, and it takes the part of, of a strong school board, a strong central office staff, 
and everybody playing together as a community. But I want to go back to the school board. They have very strongly pushed the focus back on student learning, trying to bring the whole county together as Roanoke County, a team, the team Roanoke County, and the purpose of educating all students and making sure that all students have what they need to learn. And one way that we're, that we're doing that and making sure students have what they need to learn, not just in Roanoke County, but also the entire Roanoke Valley, is our annual Load the Bus Drive that we just completed uh, this month. That's one of my favorite events every year. It is so exciting to watch the difference that people make in their lives. Just simply making some of those donations can give students an opportunity that, that they may not have. It gives students hope. I continually use the greatest thing that an education provides is hope for all children. And through the, these donations that people have made, I want to just say thank you. The school board would say thank you. And especially we want to thank Walmart uh, for their many years, 18, 18, year, yeah. 18 years now. Uh, so I want to say a very special thank you to Walmart. But, you know, there's, there's so much more when it comes to our community being involved in our schools. And this is one place that we're starting to really kind of expand, and that's the concept of volunteers in our schools. Because, as we said earlier, it takes the community. That's that third part, students, teachers, but it's also the community to make effective learning. It does. And, you know, there is so much need in our community for we talk about relationship building and children to be able to, to communicate. You know, I hear all the time people saying, well, I'll, I'll come in and read to the students. What I would challenge people to do is come in and let a child read to you or be a partner with them and read together. Young people want to show what they've learned. They want to share what they've learned. They want to express that. Volunteerism can reach not only in the instruction, helping in math reading, but you can come in and help do things in the school, provide food, provide clothing, provide materials for teachers. Teachers also love the community involved because yes, they, they go through the stress, but it says thank you for a job well done when they come in and see treats. We're not only just looking for individuals, but we are looking for businesses, communities, churches, organizations, any group that wants to come in. We have a process and the best person to contact is you. Yes, contact me. Yeah. And, yeah, so for anybody who is interested in uh, volunteering and being part of our school system, certainly get a hold of us, um, and we'll be happy to work with you and find the best fit um, between you know, volunteer or organization uh, and our schools. And another place that was a really great fit uh, that we have been participating in now for several years is our partnership with the YMCA and the Y Splash program. And in, in many respects, this is a life-saving partnership. It is, and thank you again to the various organizations. Um, the foundation was huge in this. Uh, the foundation was little known about them, but we had always asked for any kind of donations mm -hmm. to the Roanoke County Public Schools Foundation, and the foundation board saw the importance of combining with the YMCA to provide swimming so that students know water safety, know basic skills so that if something ever happened, they would know how to do yeah. it. Not only is it good for that, but it's good for them physically. And it was fun to watch these programs occur. Yeah, this is a great opportunity that, that we're doing that, you know, that second graders get those critical, potentially life-saving uh, water safety skills. Partnerships really is kind of the, the ongoing theme here. And the next one that we wanted to talk about, and you mentioned it uh, in a previous segment a little bit, is our apprenticeship program. And this is something that's brand new. We're getting ready to roll out uh, this year. And to be honest, we're pretty excited about it. Yeah, and there's been a lot of work. I have to give kudos to um, Jason Sir and Mark Jones for all the work that they have done. We will have our first apprenticeship has already begun. Um, we're working with the Department of Labor, Virginia Department of Education. We're working with the school division to find ways to put students in. It's a certification-based mm -hmm. apprenticeship program. It's not just coming in and working. You are working towards a certification, towards job readiness skills in a, in a company of mm -hmm. any sort. Um, we still have a lot more work to do. We're going to need a lot of support, but this could help meet a lot of needs, um, especially so many of the businesses have individualized needs. We can't meet those, but if we allow work in partnership with the company, they can do that. One other place that we definitely want to, to make sure that we uh, we tout and say a, a special congratulations to is is our entire music and choral program and performing arts program. Once again, 14th year for this. 
named one of the nation's best communities for music education. And it is. Uh, if you go to a concert, you have a stressful day, and you go in and even going to the marching band competitions to hear our choirs perform, to go to concert bands, to see how many of our kids are receiving state awards, state recognitions, how many of our bands are rated superior. It's, it's almost relaxing. I, I enjoy just going to hear the music because it just soothes your soul. Yeah, and, and one more that we just wanted to kind of say a, a special thank you. Uh, we were, and frankly, we were pleasantly surprised when the Roanoke Magazine uh, named us as a, give us a silver award as one of the best places to work in the yeah. Roanoke Valley. Yeah, right it there. It was right here, and it, it was a tremendous recognition because, again, uh, when we do a lot of surveys and stuff, we find that our staff love working in Roanoke County, especially with our students, especially with our, you know, with our fellow co-workers. Mm -hmm. We have a great system, and we are going to work harder to become even better. And I think that in talking about community, it is because you know our schools not only support our community, uh, our community supports our schools, but it is all one family. Yes, I would agree. Absolutely. And so we want to talk even more, though, about the, all of the accomplishments and success outside of the classroom. So don't go anywhere. We'll continue our conversation with Dr. Greg Killo coming up. then, I need you to care now. Don't turn a blind eye to teenage drinking. Hi and welcome back to Accent Excellence. We're continuing our conversation with Dr. Greg Killo celebrating success here at Rhino County Public Schools. And Dr. Killo, we've talked about academics, we've talked about our partnerships with the community, so now let's look at all of the accomplishments, many, many of them, uh, that take place outside of our classroom that our students and teachers are well, again, our students, our coaches, our schools, each of them are winning and being recognized in athletics and extracurricular act activities, not only at the district, but at the regional, state, and national level. What powerful accomplishments. Our students are being seen on state and national mm -hmm. levels all the time. And congratulations to each of those accomplishments by each of those individuals, schools, and teams. Also, a big part of that is our school board. They are very actively involved. They attend a lot of these mm -hmm. events. They also recognize these students at school board meetings. Yeah, most school board meetings you come to, uh, we have some sort of recognition going on oftentimes right. um, for academics, but also for many uh, academic and athletic related mm -hmm. championships, including a couple that we wanted to kind of highlight, Case Spring and, and Hidden Valley High Schools, state champions for uh, Case Spring of Scholastic and Debate, Hidden Valley of Forensics, and Yearbook. These yeah. are Big accomplishments. Big accom and they're not only just doing it at the state level, they're going on to the national level yeah. and performing extremely well at those levels. But when you look at the academic team and you just see how much they practice and you listen to the and see the competition, it is mind-blowing. Oh, it is it's tremendous. Tough. Then you look at the yearbook and all the work. You know, we're talking about really job embedded skills. Here they are. Here we really are doing it. And we're competing mm -hmm. at a, a state and national level and winning. And you talk about debate and other things. Wow! You talk about four C's. There's four C's right it there. It is absolutely one other that you know we've talked about repeatedly on this show. In fact, in a previous edition of uh, Accent, we've watched demonstrations from the BCAT Motorsports team. <laughs> Once again, they are national champions. And they were invited in by the board, and the board was just. I think everybody's mouth was agape when they just saw how efficiently, how quickly they took a motor apart did it in an organized fashion, had to meet all these standards and rules, and put it back together in less than 11 minutes. It, it, was, it was incredible. Yeah, and once again, they're, they're on the path, by the way, to possibly repeat. They've been invited back to nationals already, so we wish them the best of luck later on uh, this fall. Speaking of more national awards, though, and this is one that is, you, you, you almost can't comprehend it. Irene Johnson, Glenver High School, she didn't go to graduation because she was being recognized at Carnegie Hall. Hall. What a, again, one of our students, and it's part of the BCAT program, the art program. And I remember when I saw her work, it was just breathtaking, but not only hers, to see a whole lot of other students that won national recognition, mm -hmm. but she deserves special recognition. Can you imagine 
being at Carnegie Hall and who the predecessors that went before her, some of the names are incredible. Well, they got received the Andy same award. Warhol and yes. many others. Yeah. You, know, you talk about following in some pretty impressive footsteps. Another that we also wanted to kind of uh, definitely highlight, uh, Mitchell Lyle over at William Byrd goes to Los Angeles to the International DECA Conference and is a finalist in sports marketing and entertainment. And we think that may be the first ever Roanoke County student to ever achieve such a, a high placement at an international level conference. Again, we have great children. It doesn't matter what school. You hear all the schools being mentioned here. Every one of them have accolades. But again, what Kyle did, mm -hmm. wow. I mean, I am so impressed in what great skill set he has. It has been fantastic. And you know, we, we've talked oftentimes about CTE. You know, our CTE students are competing at regional, state, national uh, levels. Our, uh, many of our students, like almost 30 of them, placing at the state level and going on to national level competitions. And if again, <clears throat> if you spent time and visited BCAT and you saw those work or you look at the stuff that's happening in the buildings with DECA and marketing and you know FCLA and all the different groups, it's powerful that we have such great organizations, great groups and those students are competing. They don't just get these awards but they're getting a skill they're able to show a skill under a, a pressured situation and they're still able to perform. That makes you very job ready, job skilled, very powerful Abs person. Absolutely, and one that we also wanted to kind of highlight uh, in the CTE realm was down at our Center for Engineering. Two teams uh, earning uh, state and then later going on to national competitions. The first, a team from Northside and their real world uh, design challenge, and then second, a group of three different teams went to the state student-led ideation challenge and, and these uh, these uh, students uh, presented in front of the school board and they were floored. They were. They were asking those students questions and they were just taken back by the responses, their research that they had done, their thought process that they had used. Again, these are skills that will carry them a long way. Instead of just being able to design, to think through a process, to have those critical skills, those communication skills, to be able to work as a group in collaboration. Aren't these the things that business and industry are begging for? To be creative and to try to come up with solutions, real problem solving. That's what we saw in those. Yeah, absolutely. And again, we're, we're just touching the very top of, of many, many accomplishments um, that our students and our staff uh, have achieved throughout this whole year. And we could, we could talk for an entire year about all the accomplishments that happened just in this last school year to say nothing about what has happened years to go. It makes us excited for what's coming up next year. As we said, it's a celebration. It's a celebration to say to our teachers and our students, job well done. Absolutely, and so it has been a job well done. Uh, we're looking forward to another outstanding school year getting ready to start uh, later on this month. Dr. Kilo, thank you so much you. for being with us. We also want to thank you, uh, parents, the community, for all of your support. Uh, for Roanoke County Public Schools. And we want to thank you for watching uh, Accent Excellence, but don't go anywhere, there's still more to come. If you would like to adopt a pet, did you know that you can also go to the RCACP website and their Facebook page to look at pets for adoption? It's easy to do. Simply go to their website at rcacp.org or visit their Facebook page. Both sites include information and pictures of animals waiting to be adopted. Help make a difference in the life of a pet today. Adopt from the Regional Center for Animal Care and Protection. Well, folks, that's going to do it for this month's edition of Accent Excellence. If you'd like to learn more about Roanoke County Public Schools, be sure to check us out online and remember to like us on Facebook and Twitter. On behalf of all of us here at Roanoke County Public Schools, we hope you have a great start to the 2017-18 school year. I'm Chuck Leyenberger. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.